Let, let's consider some of the language that, that ACT leader David Seymour is using at the moment. Um, do you agree, for example, that all citizens being equal is a fundamental democratic value? Oh, of course. Of course. Does the treaty afford different rights for different people? Absolutely. How Absol are those <laughs> things consistent? You see what I mean? I mean, those words, are we, do we all have the same rights? Yes. Do Māori have different rights? Yes. So this is the this is the conversation, I reckon, that needs to be had around words mm. and what they mean. Absolutely. So, so, so you how, know, you, how, how, how do yeah. different rights for different people make citizens all equal? Well, we, we, we all have uh, equal rights in certain areas, but Māori have a special, Taihō Jack, a special indigenous right that is recognised in Article 1, Article 2 and Article, Article 3. Article 2 particularly recognises yeah. our sovereign or our tino ranga, tiratanga rights. Mm. Now, all New Zealanders can support that. Um, New Zealanders are, are, are all recognised in the treaty, but you can't see this is a very cunning, so, dangerous track that Seymour's going down. He wants to reduce and take so, away Māori and treaty rights. Māori are not accepting it. That's why you're getting the, the loose language from Te Pāti Māori and others out uh, there. Uh, who... Article 2, as you point out, is, is at the very centre of this debate. And that, that term, tino ranga tiratanga, just to be totally clear, in your view, does tino ranga tiratanga apply only to Māori, only to Māori who signed the treaty, mm. or to all? No, it applies to Māori. It applies to Māori. Māori have a special right that gives them the right to participate as partners in this country. And judges and academics have interpreted the treaty in that mm. manner uh, so that we they, they've interpreted it uh, as us being able to be full partners in this country. Um, others, mm. then you're talking about others, have said, no, it's not about partnership. Mm. It's about Māori running the whole show. That's not what the Labour Party wants. That's not what most reasonable New Zealanders want. Mm. We want to participate with our Pākehās and brothers and sisters, working class, right across this country as, as partners. And so we owe the judges from mm. 87... Uh, and we owe people like Bolger and Graham and Jacinda, we owe them a lot because they've said we are going to be partners despite what the Seymours and Winston Peters are saying, who are trying to deny a rightful partnership exists in this country. So, Chewy, um, I think that there is a conversation to be had here around languages and the word rights can be used differently. It's also fascinating, and you know we've said this for probably two years now, how the only rights that David Seymour wants to make equal are rights between Māori and non-Māori. You know, this might sound flippant, but disabled people have a right to park in a certain place that I don't have. So we can use the word rights and mean different things, yet we're all equal and have the same rights under the law. And I wonder, sorry to use a horrible word that I know we're going to re re repel back from because of Mr Luxon, but... Maybe entitlements is a better word. Māori are entitled to the outworking of the contract they 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 signed that non-Māori are not entitled to. You know what I mean? That's the same. Mm. That's the same thing, but it's not using that word that then Hobson's pledge get to clip out and pretend that rights only means one thing because it clearly yeah. doesn't. It clearly doesn't. You can clearly use it contextually differently at different times, Chewie. You could you could weaponize so much if you strip out the the context and the nuance of, of what you're actually discussing. Yeah. Like you see a lot of that when people when people are talking about you know Molly is just out to control everything. You know, that that sort of reaction has been around for as long as I've been alive. And it's it's come from the smallest, smallest points of of, of contention, and the, the the most gentle of like maybe we should look at this a different way, you know. We, we've spoken in the past about the seabed and foreshore. The yeah. argument around that was that Maori were going to control who could go to the beach. Such a laughably over the top hyperbolic argument that some people didn't have the the brains to sort of go mm, that's baked and took it fucking wholeheartedly and we see that same argument come back when we start talking about three waters yeah you know three waters was completely derailed 
from any conversation about the positive aspects of the fact that we need to look at how we manage our water, and it became Māori are coming for our water. Yeah. You strip the nuance, you strip the context, you just hit that big old racism button. Yeah. And you go. And and then when we're discussing something that has so much context and so much nuance around, I said earlier, are we mature enough to have this conversation? And so many in our society, and unfortunately so many in our government, are not set up and not mature enough to have this conversation. I have no problem as a Pākehā acknowledging that Māori, the, sig- the other side of the signatures on, that, on, on the treaty, have special rights. Does it negatively affect me? Fucking no. Could it pos- positively benefit me? Yes, because I live in this country. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Steph says it in an interesting way as well. This is the thing when you, it, it's so funny when you say we're not mature enough to have this conversation. I feel like we are, like we're having it right now. So what does that say about those who want to oppose these thoughts? Because like Steph's just come up with a perfectly good example. I have rights on my property that my neighbor doesn't. We are both equal citizens. So you can have it mean different things and used in different contexts. And I just That's think an that- excellent analogy, I really like. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I just think that, as we've said, forever, this is just a wedge issue that Seymour uses to get oxygen, to get votes, and probably to uh, get funding, to be perfectly honest with you. Because as soon as you say to him, what else are you going to make equal? Are we going to be, because at the moment, we're not all equal under the law due to age, because you always talk about race. Not We're not we're not equal due to age. We're not equal due to um due to sex, I've always used that example that only male priests can work in a Catholic church. So that's a discrimination, but you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to make equal or make the same any other protected class. It's only race. And because that's where your funders, your voters uh, and your votes are coming from. So it's just, it's not, it's a nonsense. And unfortunately what, when this happened last time, you know, uh, Hobson's pledge did exactly that. They clipped the last conversation where I can't remember which MP it was, sorry, but said that, um, we have different rights. There was a space under the treaty, and the under the treaty bit was clipped out of the thing that Hobbs and Fletch put out there. And I'm sure if this hasn't been done already, I'm sure it has been. It will be with um, Willie saying that Māori have different different rights. It's not the same. It doesn't feel to me at least like the same. Way. I'm not an expert, but like I said, think about it as uh, and what are what's the entitlements guaranteed to Māori based on that contract they signed? Then that kind of makes the conversation go away, right? What are the what are the entitlements that come to me based on my my bank contract versus my neighbour? What are the rights I have versus them? Mm. What are the rights that are in society? What rights do we have as citizens? What rights do Aucklanders have that people in Dunedin don't, based on them paying rates and stuff in Auckland? You know, it's just it's so silly, and it, it feels disingenuous because it feels like these guys know it's silly, but they've duped enough people. Remember, with COVID, it was always the dif- disinformation dozen farming out all that information and duping people. And then the people they've duped become their soldiers and just parrot their points without a single thought. And you ask them one question. I see it on Twitter all the time. You know, oh, the economy is the worst it's ever been under Labour. Can you show us your metrics for that? And then the goalposts move. COVID, oh. this and that. You know, it's like they've just, most of them have nothing, no ability to go one step deeper. And which means, ironically, uh, Seymour and Peters and their ilk have done a very good job in sowing this discontent. <laughs>